Get a £5 free bet every week with Offer Club from William Hill. Simply stake a total of £20 or more across the week on pre-match football accumulators with four or more selections and you'll get a £5 free bet on the Friday. Join William Hill Offer Club on mobile or online now. James Holder, IFL TV, in association with Macklin's Jim Marbella. I'm on the road today with Peter McDonough, aka the Cinderella Man, aka Peter Pan. What's happening, Pete? You all right? How you doing, James? Yeah, very well, mate. Just getting ready for me uh, fight. Yeah, I've got to say, you look in decent shape. I can tell when you're starting to get in camp, your cheekbones come out a little bit. Yeah, I start to look like a hamster, don't I? Start to yeah. look, get the hamster, mate. Yeah. What's happening there? Let's talk a little bit about what's going on. Um, well, uh, Firstly, obviously, the big big news now at the moment is uh, Joshua and Klitschko. Um, I'm, I'm excited about this. It looked like the fight was going to sort of be done and that. What, what have you made of the whole situation? Do you know what? I was the first person, James, to turn around and say, I think it's too early for Joshua, Klitschko fighting Joshua. Um, I thought with his experience, his vast experience, and uh, you know the, the, the level of opponent he's been in with, that Joshua ain't been in with yet, um, I thought Klitschko would take that fight and take it take it with both hands you know mm. but um it seems to me as though Klitschko's ducking uh, ducking Joshua you know and uh I mean when you when you talk about down to all, all the money was put together and uh you know for the uh, the belt to be put on the line and you know they said about the IBF or but belts are irrelevant in this fight because they're both one was a former world champion and one is is a world champion right but it ain't about belts it's about names and uh that's a big fight without any belts on the line. But uh, to me, it seems like uh, J uh, Klitschko now is ducking Joshua. Do you, can you understand Klitschko's point of view, the fact that he might be able to get an easier fight and get the WBA title? It's not what we want, it's not what the boxing fans want, but the fact he can go back to Germany or the Ukraine as a champion if he gets a sanctioned WBA fight in his own mind without fighting someone like Anthony Joshua. Is that logical or do you think that's a bad, a bad decision? I think it's a bad decision, James, and uh, that's why boxing at certain stages in the state is in because uh, you know we want the best to fight the best. Of you course. know, let's forget these unbeaten records and this rubbish. You know, like like I always said, records are for DJs, James. And, and listen, as long as you get two fighters that put it all on the line, you know, you both come out of the fight with respect. And uh, you know, Klitschko is a genuine world champion. Tyson, Tyson obviously is going through what he's going through now, but Klitschko was a genuine world champion until Tyson beat him. He's number one in the world, Tyson. He's got his problems at the moment, you know. Please God, he comes through them and he gets through them problems and he gets back in the ring as soon as he can. But at the moment, Klitschko's number two. Joshua's maybe three or four. So, you know, that is the fight that should be happening, is, is Joshua and Klitschko. Is Klitschko ducking Joshua? Is he just trying to have an easy like an easy fight, fighting uh, Lucas Brand, you know, to win a WBA title? And then, um, just bringing it back to Germany and going back as a world champion. It, you can't fool the public, you know? You mentioned Lucas Brown, obviously David Hay is sort of in the mix as well. There's other heavyweights still be looking at these world titles. Do you think they should all thank Tyson Fury for freeing up these belts as, as it is? Uh, well, I'll tell you what's going to happen. I'll tell you what I think is going to happen, James. I think what you're going to find now is, you know, Klitschko is going to clear the belts up again. I do think Klitschko will clear the belts up again. I think he'll go down the route of, of getting uh, Lucas Brown, you know, maybe it might he might have taken that fight, you know, because as, 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 he's been out so long, inactivity, you know, he beats Lucas Brown, then maybe he fights Joshua in the summer at Wembley, you know, but I honestly believe, I know Tyson's gone through what he's gone through and there's a few bad things what's happened and, you know, he's been he's been um, drug tested for cocaine and, but listen, when someone's mental health's all over the place, you don't know what they're thinking and how they're acting, um, you know, so let's 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 give him a little bit of uh, the benefit of that. And um, another thing, what we got to do as well is, I honestly believe that Tyson should become mandatory to any of them titles when he comes back. So you should be like sort of champ, not champion in recess, because I know that's that's not going to happen. But he should be sort of in the number one contender spot to fight for them belts as soon as he comes back. Yeah, yeah, mo yeah, most definitely because Bar Bar Klitschko, um, Joshua. I mean, really, who else is out there at heavyweight? You know, if Hay fights someone soon, you know that, you know, ain't got loads of tattoos and ain't a diamond, then we, we might start taking him serious. You know, 
He was a great fighter, David A, but let's not con the public, eh? Let's talk a little bit about boxing this weekend. Some big shows on. Frankie Gavin in action, taking on local rival Sam Egerton in Birmingham, plus a whole heap of Birmingham talent on that card as well. The likes of Cal Your Fire, Marcus Buffer French, and some other lads. Talk to me about the main event. How do you see Egerton versus Frankie Gavin playing out? Um, Frankie Gavin against um, Sam Egerton, I think it's a good fight, but I can see that going exactly the same way as uh, Ski uh, Egerton. I mean, they're saying that Eglinton's going to do something different this time, but when you've got someone so like masterful on his feet, like Frankie Gavin, I don't think Eglinton gets near him. And I predict it could be a late stoppage. Eglinton, obviously, on the last fight against Bradley Ski, he said he, he, he didn't feel it himself. He felt like he was taking it for granted, being the champion. He wasn't hungry enough. Do you think he'll come in sort of with more tenacity for this fight and being a local derby as well, he'll, he'll be bang up for it? Yeah, definitely. But I think that's where he'll come more unstuck because I think he'll get hit at will, you know? I think he'll get hit at will against um, Frankie Gavin because I know Frankie Gavin will be up for this because it's a derby, you know? Frankie Gavin spied a lot of rounds of Eglinton as well. And, you know, if Frankie Gavin thinks he can beat you, he takes some beating. So I, 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 that's how I see the fight going. I see either Frankie Gavin, big points win, or a late stoppage by busting Eglinton up. Do you think this is make or break for the winner in terms of topping big TV cards for a little while? Because they're both obviously similar fan bases, similar area. They're both obviously vying for that for that position to move on to the next stage. So do you think this the right thing? Do you think this sort of this this is a make or break fight for both of them? Well. It's more for Frankie Gavin, because where does Frankie Gavin go if he loses here? I mean, Eglinton can regroup again. You know, this is probably above British level, as, as Frankie Gavin's beat Bradley Ski. Um, it's probably just above British level, so he can regroup again very quick. But I think with, um, with uh, Frankie Gavin, I think, you know, I think he'll think about his career, you know, because Frankie Gavin thinks he's beyond British and Commonwealth level, you know? This weekend as well, Jamie Cox in action. Paul Butler added as well late to the Steve Wood card in Bolton. No one really wants to fight Jamie Cox. He, he, he seems to be struggling to stop and start to get names and even to get half decent opponents. What, what do you make of Jamie Cox as a fighter? I think Jamie Cox is probably one of, if not the best, super middleweight in the world. You know, he, he, you know he's up there with Degal. You know, he's, he's a top fighter. You know, and he will get his opportunity sooner or later. And uh, he, is, he is a class act. You know, he reminds me a little bit of Joe Selkirk. You know, he's got all the moves, he's got all, he can punch, he's a good boxer, you know, and he's a lovely kid. Mm. So, you know, it, it's only a matter of time before he gets his chance and obviously Box Nation and Frank Moran will get their chance for him. You know, and um, I, I'd like to see him against um, James DeGale, I would, or George Groves, you know? Fight. Yeah, yeah, I'd, like, I'd like to see, I'd like to see like, but that he's James DeGale's good friend. You know, so I don't know whether that'll happen, but business, business, it could happen, you know? Well, James DeGale obviously was waiting on news regarding his unification, um, which is going to be massive, massive, and it does happen against Badu Jack. Um, yeah. We're just, again, buying on dates and, and, and sort of venues and stuff. Yeah, I think DeGale, I think DeGale um, beats, beats uh, Badu Jack. I think he'll, he'll have a bit too much for Badu Jack. I think he'll be a bit too clever for him. You know, styles make fights and... You know, I think I think he I think he'll play with Blue Jack, you know. Mm -hmm. So, and I think he's he, he is a genuine world champion, James DeGale. Let's talk a little bit about yourself. You're back in action on the 29th of November at Tolworth. Decent local cards stacked with local talent, and I know there's with you was due to be fighting on the Klitschko Fury undercard, so that's sort of messed up your preparation. Rather than waste that and that camp and everything else, you've, you've managed to get yourself on this card. Talk to me a little bit about this. Um. Yeah, no, I, I, I um, spoke to my team after the fight was cancelled. Spoke to my manager Daniel and uh, obviously MGM and uh, all the MGM team. And uh, they turned around and just they got me out of in two days later. And they said, "Do you want to fight local to where you where you where you live? You know, and do you want to get on this card? We we'll get you on it in an eight rounder." So that's what they've done. So you know, they've got me got me out. Keeps me busy and. Uh, until something else comes along, you know, something big, bigger and better. But obviously, don't take no one for granted or take a fight for granted. You know, it's all about winning. I've just got to keep winning. If I keep winning, I'll get titles. It's been a little while since you've fought locally as well, so no doubt it'll be good for all your friends and, and family, maybe people that don't get the opportunity to come out to as many of the big away days as possible, come out and see, see you in action. Yeah, most definitely. I've, I've, done, I've done probably 100, yeah, 
100 and, 150 tickets. You know, just just on a local little show, which ain't bad, you know. Yeah. And that, that ain't everyone going, but it's yeah, like you say, it's nice because I'm always fighting in Ireland, Dublin. It'd be Manchester, or I'd be so it'd be just more local people can come watch me, you know, fight. So yeah, it's good. Let's talk a little bit about Paddy Barnes in action in Belfast. Jamie Conlon on the card as well. Decent stuff for Paddy Barnes. Can't wait to see his professional debut. Talk to me a little bit about that. Um, first, we go to Jamie Conlon, who's top of the bill. Uh, you know, we ain't got to talk much about Jamie Conlon. We know what he's about, and you know, Jamie Conlon, he's always in a war. You know, he is the, you know, we named him the Little Mexican because he is, he is like a little Mexican, you know, and uh, you know he's always in a good fight, always in a, always in a war, no matter who he fights. But let's hope he makes it a bit easier this time, uses his boxing ability. And I mean, it's great to have obviously Paddy Barnes on the on the bill with him. Obviously, he'd be like, you know, he's a hero in Ireland. So he's it, royalty. In yeah, Ireland. yeah, he's royalty in Ireland. You know, listen, you don't, we don't ever get to see leprechauns, do we? Do you know what I mean? And 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 he is a real leprechaun, you know. So you know, and and he has got the gold, you know. So I'd like to see him fight with for a world title within about ten fights because I think he's that he's that good, you know. His pedigree at the moment, I mean, he should he should be on six or eight rounders straight away. Yeah. You know, he's top amateur and a lovely kid, Paddy Barnes. Well, listen, we wish Paddy and the lads good luck. I wish you the best of luck for the 29th uh, in Tulworth.